And we've had some weird times on the locals, we, on local markets. Sorry, tech up, down, online retailers trying to stand out in this lockdown for the very latest on what's going on in today's markets. We're welcomed by Marcus Droga, Shaw and Partners. Good afternoon, Marcus. There he is. Oh, he's got. Oh, it's just. It's, look, I'm on my own. You've got your mask it's on. The it's mask. the. It's the new normal. It so works. yeah, <laughs> there he is. I guess. I guess it is, Annette. I don't. I don't really need it in here. It's only me, and uh, I just thought I'd show you that we are uh, very conscious in here in the office of uh, making sure we've got our masks. But uh, other than that, uh, we're just roaming free. So there we go. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. good afternoon to you. Yeah, I, as we say, I hope this isn't the new normal. So the market opened and it was down around nearly 1% at one stage. It's finding its way back. Any standouts yeah. amongst these moves? Yeah, look, uh, Annette, it's been a, it's pretty low volumes going through the market and we are going into financial year end. So typically we do have some tax selling that uh, comes out around this time of year. Uh, for all sorts of reasons. And, uh, but the regional markets are also down. So there's a bit of a negative sentiment uh, around, Nikkei's down around 1%. We were down uh, 0.6 a percent, I think around 67 points at one stage. But as I've been uh, writing my report uh, to, to bring today, the market's actually been improving. Last I looked, it was down around 16 points. And the backdrop there is that the US market, S&P 500, hit an all-time high last night. And the NASDAQ also hit an all-time high. The Dow wasn't at that level, but was off a, off a bit. Commodities were relatively strong last night. Most, most were up. Uh, the standout was iron ore up around 1%. But uh, crude oil is down or was down last night and we're awaiting the results of an OPEC meeting in the next day. So we'll see what happens there. So there's a little bit of uncertainty hovering around. And I think also going into this tax financial year end, uh, you do get uh, some, some general selling that occurs. Uh, standout wise, when I started writing the report, there was only two sectors up that were of any interest was the healthcare space. And again, that was CSL. If CSL's up, generally that space uh, is up. That was up uh, a little bit before. And also in the information technology area, you had uh, Afterpays seems to have the afterburners on again. And uh, that's had a rise today, but it's actually for the month, it's up 29%, Annette. So it's having a really, really strong rally. And of course, on the back of the NASDAQ technology stocks, um, hitting all-time highs. Afterpay is really the pick in the sector for uh, big liquid funds that want to take positions. And uh, so it's been delivering. But since then, I've noticed a few other sectors have come into the green. Uh, consumer staple or consumer discretionary had uh, Wes Farmers up as well. But I think there's a bit more green ink on the screen. As I said before <laughs> I came in uh, just now, market was down around 16 points. So it may well have improved and we may end up the rate it's going uh, open up, uh, close down, close uh, fairly square today. So we'll see about that. Yeah, I think after yesterday, I think we were up and down and unchanged. It could be the same today. I'll be interested in your thoughts. I'm actually speaking to Collins Foods CEO very shortly. Pretty good mm, yeah, results. Yeah, yeah. And yet the, it's one of the laggards of today. Do you know what went wrong or was it just record high and take some money off the table? Uh, look, I think a little bit of that. And I also think the, uh, I just had a look at some of the numbers. Uh, the numbers are really good. It's for the year end, uh, 2nd of May, their financial year, which is a bit uh, different to most of the market. So that's why I'm reporting today. Uh, I think the market was expecting a little bit more in uh, terms of uh, profits. Uh, it didn't deliver exactly in profits. But look, the numbers were really good. And it just goes to show that We've had this period, if you go back to May last year, May this year, there was quite a bit of COVID going on last year. We've now got it on again with lockdown as well. But the business that they're in is the restaurant business and restaurant business specifically is uh, KFC here, Taco Bell here, um, KFC in Germany and Netherlands, and also Sizzler Group. Uh, they've got that uh, pretty well operating uh, right throughout Southeast Asia. So you've got a number of plays going on globally into this uh, fast food takeaway restaurant uh, concept. 
and they've done really well. So I look at some of the numbers here, and we're talking, when we talk KFC, we're talking 240 franchise stores in Australia. Um, in Germany, 17. In uh, Netherlands, 23. And 12 Taco Bells in Australia. And they're getting growth in all of those. So looking at the numbers, revenue was up 12.4% to over a billion dollars for the year. Uh, under uh, statutory EBITDA, that's earnings before interest tax, depreciation and amortisation, was up at 184 million versus 175 last year. And, uh, and underlying EBITDA was actually at uh, up 12.4 per cent to 136 million. They've also undertaken during the year, they out of cash flow, they funded 18 new stores open, and that included 12 KFCs here in Australia and some Taco Bells as well. Plus, they also, the problem for them was more Europe. Europe held them back. The Australian result was outstanding. Uh, sales growth was around 13.5%, 13.6%. But where they were held back was Europe. The stop-start nature of COVID last year really sort of dampened that business there. But they did take the opportunity to open uh, a development application for opening new stores, particularly in the Netherlands as well. So they've strategically been able to move around in the opportunities that COVID has presented over there. So the outlook's very good. They've got um, 66 new stores forecast to be open or development of uh, by 2028. So it's a very, very strong profile they've got with the success of their business. We know that they advertise a lot. We see them on TV. And uh, I think the slogan is, isn't it, uh, take my money, where's mm -hmm. the Kentucky, right? So they're, um, they're, they're basically, they are taking the money, they're making the money, and they're, they're doing very well. But as I said, the result did disappoint the market a little bit. And last I looked, they were down around 65 cents or 5.1%. But I'm sure when you get the CEO on, it's, uh, it's a very positive story as to uh, the, the change of dietary or the growth of dietary habits of Australians when they're, um, and overseas, when they, uh, despite the pandemic being around. So yeah, no, good story. Uh, the, the reaction to the share price doesn't reflect the growth that they've seen uh, in the last 12 months. Oh, thank, thanks for the tip. Marcus, we're out of time. I'll leave it there and we'll speak to you again soon. Marcus okay. from Shoring Partners.